Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Now, I've always said that Python is a programming language that takes care of you, and it does this by making difficult things abstracted away. You only have to call simple functions and the right thing happens. Today, we'll take a look at one such example, that in particular being random.shuffle. In case you're not aware of what random shuffle does, well, it's exactly what it says. You give it a list, you say random.shuffle, and what you get back is the same list, just with the items inside in a random order. That's really cool, because to do that yourself is non-trivial. It actually takes a fair bit of work. So one day, I decided to sit down and to go to one of the most manual programming languages that are out there, C, and to try and replicate this same effect using an algorithm that I've had to write with my own hands. This is the result of what I've written. It's clearly not the only way to approach this problem, but I think I've found a good balance in terms of the complexity as well as, well, efficiency. So yeah, let's take a look at my interpretation of random.shuffle. So before we write the code, let's talk a little bit about our plan of action. So what we have here is an array, nice and sorted. It doesn't have to be sorted, but it helps us in understanding this algorithm a little bit better. Now, our approach will be like selection sort. Kinda, but we're not actually sorting, we're messing up the order. So here's how things are gonna go. We're gonna start on the left side of our list. We're gonna pick an item, find a random item elsewhere in the list, and swap the two. We'll move on to the next item, and essentially, the process repeats itself. So yeah, I say this is inspired by selection sort because the behavior is similar. We take stuff from the right half of the list, we'll pull out the item we want and put it towards the left list. So selection sort builds up a sorted left sublist, we are instead going to build up a shuffled sublist on the left. So let's continue on with this trace. Now it is possible sometimes to actually pick an item that is at the position that we are looking at, in which case it doesn't swap. That's possible. But yeah, you get the idea. We move on, we swap items, we move on, we swap items, so on and so forth. So yeah, of course, the magic comes about because we are generating random indices. And once we have everything in place, then we have a fully shuffled list like so. So that's our strategy to approaching this problem. So as promised, we're going to do this in C, and I'm going to start by just building up some basic boilerplate that generates an array for us. So let's go with an array of 10 items like we've seen in the demonstration earlier. And all we're going to do is we're going to populate it with essentially the same set of values. So the values from 1 to 10. So i runs from 0 to 9, we're going to do plus 1 to it so that the values that are actually in the array would go from 1 to 10 rather than 0 to 9, just to make things look a little bit nicer. In fact, just for fun, what we could do is we could print everything out just to have a feel of, you know, what values actually live inside the array. Alright, so here is our print statement. It'll display integers separated by spaces, and it'll go through all the indices from within the array to give us those values. So compiling and running this code, we get the values 1 through the 10. No surprises here. What we can now do is to implement our algorithm. To start, let's build a random number generator. Luckily, C provides this for us. All we need to do is to include the required libraries. So we're going to use the standard library to give us the random seed function. And it's typical to seed it with the current time. So let's include time as well. Time null, like so. Now it's time to build our actual for loop that's going to go through the array and pull out random items from within it. We're going to go one pass from left to right, as we've seen in the demonstration earlier. And to start, we're going to generate a random index. Now, when we call the ran function, which is what is used to generate a random number, what you'll find is that this gives you huge values. In fact, what I've done here is I've just printed out the random values that have been generated, and as you can see, it's huge numbers. I think they look like 15-bit numbers, so they go up to 32768. But regardless of what it is, the number is way too big for us. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the modulo function to keep it down within the range of 0 to 9. 
those other values that are within the range of the array. Of course, if you're going to use a variable length, then the variable length goes here as well. So as you can see, after compilation and running this new code, we get values that are more within range. But that's actually not enough. Remember, we don't want to actually touch everything from within the array. We only want the things that come at i or after, not before. So it's not quite as simple as what we've written in our code. We don't really want to limit it to all 10 items. There are less than 10 items. There are whatever comes after i. That's why it's 10 minus i. This statement in and of itself will generate a value between 0 and 10 minus i, exclusive. Of course, since we want things to go to the right side of the array, we need to move it forward by i. To make things clearer, I've tweaked up the code just a little bit, and hopefully you can see how it works. I've displayed the value of i on top of the index that has been generated. So I get that some of these numbers look like they're repeated. That's because they're pulling random numbers out of a very small range. But yeah, the idea is the value you get here for index will never be smaller than i. In other words, we can never pull stuff from the left side of i. So cool, we have our index now. All that's left to do is to perform a swap. Swapping is a very classic thing to do, so we won't go too deep into how it's done. Usually we use temp to pull out, say, the ith item of the array. Since we have that tucked away somewhere, we can then replace it with the item at position index. Finally, we replace the item at position index with temp. This performs a swap of the two items. So with that done, all that's left to do is to actually visualize the values that are coming out of the array. Thanks to the fact that we've gone through the whole trouble of pulling out a random value like so and then swapping the values, when we look at our array, we'll now see that it has been shuffled into a random order. And what's cool is that every time I run the program, I will get a different set of values. Of course, this is limited based on how the random seed works. In other words, you will only get one random sequence per second, but that's just a seed quirk. Let's not worry too much about that. But anyway, yeah, that's the general idea. That's how you do random not shuffle if you didn't have Python to help you. This is what the entire code would look like. And there you go. It's a fun little exercise that shows you just how much Python does under the hood that you don't really get to see. So yeah, next time you use a convenience function like this in Python, just remember how much work actually goes into making this happen. That's all there is for this episode of Friday Minis. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've gained some insight into the technicalities of a very simple programming language. But yeah, until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video and are feeling generous, a donation to this channel will be greatly appreciated. There's a link on screen and in the video description for more details. Meanwhile, please do like, comment, and subscribe. This helps the channel tremendously and gives me the means to do more. Thank you once again, and I'll see you next time.